Let's begin the fourth section of our lecture, laser surgery. And in this section, we will talk about the principal and types of laser used in the surgery. Then what are the effect of laser on tissues and zone of tissue damage as a result of the laser surgery or laser therapy? So first, what's laser stand for? The word laser is for light amplification uh, by stimulated emission of radiation. So the word laser, laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. And that's the... Uh, the instrument or the laser that is used for the surgery. So laser, now we know what the word laser stands for. Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. We are so used to the word laser and we keep on saying the word laser so often and we don't know what the word laser stands for. So it's the light amplification by stimulated emission of a radiation. Next, the principle of laser. The uh, As we said, it's the st uh, stimulated emission of radiation. So the process of uh, giving the laser or the start of laser therapy begins with the uh, stimulated emission of triggered identical photon from sti stimulated atom. So in this, we need the stimulated atom, atom in the excited state. And then it can, uh, before emission, that atom is raised to the excited level. So from E1 energy source 1, it raised to the energy level 2, and then it is excited. And then this excited atom released the uh, energy and more photons are produced and it the process keeps on going on. So stimulated emission, there is a sequence of triggered identical photon from stimulated atom. Then this cause multiplication of phot photon through stimulated emission, which cause coherent, powerful, monochromatic, collimated beam production. So laser is starts with the, uh, or the, it's initiated as uh, excited atom uh, in this excited state, and then it is reached to the excited level. At that level, uh, the stimulation of photons takes place, and then it is more and more uh, caused powerful monochromatic collimated beans as a result of multiplication of photon through stimulated emission. And then photon comes in contact with another atom or molecule in high energy level cause atom to return to ground state energy level E1. So first the atom is stimulated to the high energy level E2 and then it caused uh, stimulation of more photon at the end. The E2 level and of, uh, uh, atom at the E2 level release the energy comes back to the ground level, comes back to the E1 level, and during the process, the uh, release of energy occurs, and this energy causes uh, creation of a beam or the light. So now we know the word um, laser, which is the amplification of light by stimulated emission of radiation, and that radiation 
emission is by a sequence of processes that causes the uh, excited atom to release the energy, more photons, and then first raise to E2 level, and then in the process of coming back to E1 level, the energy is released, photons are released that cause amplification of the uh, light source. So this is the principle of laser. Now different types of laser we can use in the uh, surgery and what are the different wavelengths of those uh, lasers. We have argon laser which is the wavelength 5, 488 to 514 uh, nm. Then we have KTP and this KTP is potassium titanyl uh, phosphate which is 5 32 uh, and the which is neodymium and the neodymium yttrium aluminium garnet jag 1060 carbon dioxide um, we have 10600 ho yag holmium YAG 2100, ER YAG which is erbium YAG 29, 2960, diode laser 600 to 1000 and then we have turnable dye lasers which is 577 nm. So all these are different wavelengths of different lasers which are used for the uh, surgery. Different types of lasers. We will go over later on whether they are used in the surgery or not, how they are used. But these are the different types of la la lasers which are available. And then we have the wavelengths of the different laser types. Now, effect of laser on the tissue, what, how the, once the laser is applied, how the different tissues react to the application of the laser, and what's the effect of laser on the tissue, we have these four different effects. The laser might at, go at, uh, um, uh, reach the tissue and it is reflected from the tissue. Here you can see reflection of the laser laser beam. So reflection of the laser occur. Then we have scattering or diffusion of the tissue once it reaches the um, surface. Then we have absorption. Some of the laser beam might be absorbed by the tissue and then sometimes it is transmitted and it goes deep in the tissue. So reflection, diffusion, absorption and transmission these are the effect of the laser on the tissue reflection then we have absorption scatter shorter wavelength more energy scattered so if the wavelength of the uh, laser is short more laser or more beam is scattered more energy is scattered so that's important point so the wavelength is very important to determine how deep it will go and how it will affect or it will have effect on the tissues if it has low short wavelength wavelength and more of it is scattered. Then we have also the transmission of the laser. So these are the effect of laser on the tissue. We have different types of lasers available depending on the wavelength. Uh, we have some with very high wavelength, some with the shorter wavelength, smaller wavelength, and the one with the smaller wavelength, they have more ability to uh, scatter once they uh, go to the tissue. 
Then effect of laser on the tissue depends on the absorbed energy, how much energy is absorbed. These are the different uh, wavelengths of the lasers. We have laser with 465, 640 and 880. And if you see the smaller the wavelength, the less deep is the penetration of the labor, la laser. So it's 465. It just reaches to the epidermis. Skin has uh, three layers. We have epidermis, top layer, dermis, the middle layer, and then the subcutaneous tissue or the fatty layer. So this is the epidermis. Then we have dermis and subcutaneous. Shorter wavelength, smaller wavelength, thus reach to the epidermis top level. Then with 640, it can go to the uh, uh, little below the dermis. And then with 880, it can go down even the subcutaneous and past the skin layer also. So depending on how much is the wavelength and how much is the absorbed energy, the effect of laser on tissue depends on that. At 60 degrees Celsius, protein denaturation occurs, but tissue can recover from the injury. At 80 degrees centigrade, degradation of collagen tissue occurs. And at about 100 degrees, cells in their pericellular water, the fluid around the cell, convert into heat and cause tissue ablation and tissue death. So all these are the effect of laser on the tissue. Now, different zones of tissue damage, we have uh, uh, three, four zones, three zones of damage of the tissue as a result of laser therapy. We have the zone of vaporization, very superficial area. That's the zone of vaporization as a result of heat. Zone of necrosis, here the necrosis can occur, which is the death of the tissue. And then we have zone of thermal conductivity and repair. So there are three zones of tissue damage. We have zones of vaporization, top portion. Then we have zone of necrosis, death as a result of thermal uh, or heat and then we have the zone of thermal conductivity and repair. And below that, we have normal tissue. So there are three zones of uh, tissue damage. The damage tissue to the tissue depends on the amount of energy absorbed. Different temperatures have different effects. And the less the wavelength, the less is the penetration, more the wavelength, more deep is the penetration. So that's the very, very, these are the basic principles of the use of the labor and how the tissues react to the effect of the laser. So that was about section one. Thank you for watching scardia.com.